Welcome to this short act of worship from the link charge of St Andrew's Hope Park and Martyrs with Strathkinnis. Whether you're listening online or joining in by telephone, you're most welcome. Our worship will include a hymn played by David Fisher and sung by Connor Going, hymn 533, a reading by Flora Falls, a reflection, a prayer, and after the benediction, some music played by Callum MacLeod. I invite you to remember the lit candle that sits on the communion table, a sign that Christ is the light of the world, and that light never falters, never fades. The psalmist says, Every day I shall bless you and praise your name for ever and ever. Let's worship God together. Hymn 533, Will You Come and Follow Me? I encourage you to join in at home. Hymn 533. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my light be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare, should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see, if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean, and do such as this unseen, and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me? Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go, where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. The reading is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 14 to 20. Mark 1, 14 to 20. Let us listen for a word from God. After John had been arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. The time has arrived. The kingdom of God is upon you. Repent and believe the gospel. Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee when he saw Simon and his brother Andrew at work with casting nets in the lake, for for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, mending their nets. At once he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Amen. There are certain moments in time that don't pass without change. 
We experienced one earlier this week when, as the clock struck 12 noon in Washington DC on the 20th of January, Joe Biden became the 46th President of the United States. The ceremony itself, maybe surprisingly, wasn't running late, but early. Indeed, after he had taken the oath, there was still around eight minutes to go before noon. There was a short pause and the TV commentator was wondering if they were going to wait around eight minutes before he was invited to deliver his inauguration address. Were people texting each other saying, we're ahead of time, what shall we do now? I don't know, but he was invited forward, started speaking and 12 noon arrived. People interviewed from the States have expressed how, even although a pandemic is prominent, that it feels different already, a returning to a more usual way of operating, at least in politics, after the previous four years. In our reading today, it is also a moment of change. Mark's Gospel is the shortest gospel and the narrative skips along. We picked up reading halfway through the first chapter, And Jesus has already been baptised, and John, who had baptised him, has been arrested. Jesus is in Galilee proclaiming the gospel, and the first words he utters are, The time has arrived, the kingdom of God is upon you. Now, no longer waiting on the arrival of the Messiah, but the start of Jesus' ministry and a clear statement, The kingdom of God is upon you now. Change is here. He approaches the fishermen in Galilee, Simon and Andrew. Come, follow me, he says. At once they left their nets and followed him. The time has arrived. The kingdom of God is upon you. Come, follow me. Their words not only thrown out there, but they make a statement about how things are and they initiate a speedy response, and immediately Simon and Andrew leave their nets and follow him. Most of us ponder life-changing decisions for a period before deciding on a course of action. What subjects to study at school? What job when we leave school do we hope to secure? Who might we marry, if anyone? Where might we live? We weigh up, well, maybe most of us, the pros and cons, some more than others, depending on whether we are prone to procrastination or action. But here the words spill from the lips of Jesus and life-changing decisions are made there and then. A little further on, the same things happen, but now it's James and John. He calls them and they respond. Of course, when talking to Simon and Andrew, he doesn't say simply, follow me, but follow me and I will make you fishers of men, or more inclusively, follow me and I will make you fish for people, as the New Revised Standard Version edition of the Bible expresses it. They are fishermen and Jesus chooses a metaphor that they know, that they know inside out. They know the water, their boats, the nets, the fish, And something about how he expresses that call to them so attracts them that immediately they respond positively. Normally, if I'm honest, when I hear the phrase, follow me and I will make you fishers of men, my mind settles on two things. Firstly, follow me. And I have a picture of people leaving their old lives behind and following Jesus. It's profound and dramatic. And secondly, the phrase, fishers of men, and I picture lives brimming with action and determination, with purpose and productivity. However, this time, for some reason, I allowed those images to settle, and I I was left with the other words, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Maybe for those four fishermen, These were the words that were the most profound and the most prominent. Jesus was standing in front of them and saying, I will make you fish for people. Lay down your old lives, focus on me and follow me, and I will take time and put in effort to shape you and form you and change you so that you can do wonderful things. 
God knows who we are better than we know who we are. God knows our strengths and weaknesses inside out, even if we are still discovering them. God cherishes us and loves us. And this invitation to service comes accepting each person for who they are, but not saying, follow me and do as you please, and you will be fishers of people. No, Jesus says, follow me and I will make you fishers of people. It talks about relationship and involvement. It talks about us allowing God to influence and shape our lives and our actions. This is a spectacular story. These fishermen who will go on to doubt Jesus, question him, abandon him, deny him, and yet they are the ones who are invited and they cannot help but focus on Jesus and something about who Jesus is makes them able to respond and do so immediately. Jesus' words, the time has arrived The kingdom of God is upon you. Follow me and I will make you fish for people. May the response of Simon, Andrew, James and John prompt ours. May we adventure with Jesus Christ and allow God to shape us. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, those first disciples had the privilege of seeing you in person, hearing you speak out loud those words that would change their lives. Come, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they responded, and from that first meeting they grew to observe you and watch you shape them and their lives. For their clear acceptance of your call, and all their service through the years of your life, death and resurrection, we offer you thanks. In each age you come to people and issue that same call, follow me and I will make you fish for people. So many ways to express a positive response. Our lives as they are, but with a focus on you and serving you, And for some, a call to recognise ministries within the church as ministers, readers, deacons. We pray for all those who are wrestling with your words, inviting them to journey with you. May they have the strength and courage to answer yes. Take who they are and make them and shape them into loyal disciples. And we pray continue to work in each of us, making us better followers. This is the end of the week for prayer for Christian unity and so we take time to pray for all those in other congregations nearby who are finding different ways and ways that work for them to worship you in this time of lockdown. May they and we know your presence and sense your guiding hand on us. We pray for those who have already been vaccinated against COVID-19 those who've received appointments and those still concerned and waiting on news. Be with scientists, doctors, nurses, other healthcare professionals and all charged with manufacturing, distributing and administering the vaccine and caring for those infected. We pray for developing nations concerned they are at the back of the queue when it comes to receiving vaccines and that politicians will find the right way forward to be equitable to people from all nations. We remember those whose lives have been affected in the recent bad weather, especially those who have seen flooding. We pray for businesses struggling with importing or exporting to the European Union and for those struggling due to lockdown. We remember the United States of America as a new presidency begins and pray that healing and unity may rest on that nation. We hold up to you in silence those people who are uppermost in our minds today, those who are ill, in distress, bereaved. Bless them, 
may they receive the help and support they need. Our Father, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. One notice, there will be a meeting of the Kirk Session on Thursday the 4th of February at 7 o'clock via Zoom. That's Thursday the 4th of February at 7 o'clock. Friends, please take care and stay safe. The benediction. The time is now. May Jesus Christ shape us for faithful service. Go in peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you all, now and evermore. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.